Amen. What a great God we serve. He is worthy of all our praise this day. And today he has a word for you and for me. And he wants to encourage us this day. Doesn't matter where you are in life. God is able to meet you and to reach you right where you are because he is a great God. Amen. Uh, my name is Kiombero Morigo, and today I'm going to be sharing a word, and the title of the message is Food for the Journey. You know, when you're traveling, you really need to eat a good meal, don't you? And we're in this journey, and I just want us to get on with it and just go straight to 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'll read from verse 1 all the way to verse 9. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba, in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Now this is an account of Elijah, and we know Elijah and the exploits that he had done, how God had used him to, to prophesy that there would be famine for three and a half years, and it happened, and he was used again to prophesy that it would rain, and it rained. He was the same one who brought a young boy back to life. He is the same man who had been at the Mount of Carmel and had also contested with the prophets of Baal, and he had won and gotten victory. He had gone through so much of the power of God working through him. And then came this one day, this one day when he was intimidated, when the spirit of Jezebel, the controlling, manipulative, dis divisive spirit came to try and attack uh, Elijah. And Elijah, you can see that he got really uh, negative uh, vibes and he got really depressed and, and he, he ran away, away to a place where he could just talk to his father. He could talk to God and tell God how tired he was and how, how disappointed he was and how he needed to just give up. Okay, I've done all that you had given me power and strength to do, but now I'm so tired. And I don't know whether that's your situation right now with everything that's going on in your life. Maybe you feel you're so tired. You're s you have been expecting all these things to happen and you're so tired of waiting. You're so tired of fighting. Maybe you're serving God with all your heart and every time it seems that it's a battle and you're just so tired of, of putting your, your armor guard on and ready to fight and you're like oh god i'm so done and you know what god wants us to come before him he doesn't want you to just 
swallow all these feelings and emotions that you might have right now. God wants you to come before him because he cares about you and tell him exactly how you feel. If you're disappointed, if you're depressed, if you're going through all this maybe microaggressions at work, maybe you're feeling that your life doesn't matter. I don't know what it is that could be going on. Maybe you've been on lockdown for so long and you're just feeling like, oh, I can't survive in this atmosphere anymore. God wants to hear your voice. God wants to talk with you. He says, come now, let us reason together. He wants to reason with you right now. So he doesn't want you to give up. He wants you to give everything to him, to hear your voice. God cares about you. God cares about you in whatever situation that you're in. He cares and he wants to reach out unto you right now. And we go on to see that the angel, God sent an angel right where Elijah was to feed him. And Elijah was told, get up and eat. And there he found baked bread and he found water. And he fell asleep again. And the angel of God, I love verse 7, the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. Yes, the journey is too much for you, you might feel. And it's true because we're so tainted by what we see about ourselves, but God sees what he has put within you. He sees the bigger picture. So he sees the journey is so big in magnitude, but he wants to feed you enough that will sustain you for the journey that is ahead of you. Amen. You can see here that this two times feeding in one day got him to be sustained for 40 days and 40 nights walking up until the mountain of God where he would have an encounter with God, where God would give him instructions, instructions to go and anoint the kings, to anoint Jehu, to anoint Elisha, the prophet who would take over after him. He needed food to sustain him and only God would give him the right food because God knew the journey that he had prepared for Elijah. If Elijah had quit at that point, he had 24 more years of greatness that God wanted to do through him. God wouldn't allow it and God came and fed him. God wants to feed you where you are. God has food that is just for you, that will keep you all until the end. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows your life. He created you before time began. He placed you in your mother's womb and he has a purpose for your life. And he knows how far it's going to go. Just don't give up, my sister and my brother. God has food to sustain you today. It goes on to say that he was fed by this angels. He was fed by the angel and God wants to feed you. And he wants you to sit in his presence like Elijah and just open your heart, open your mouth, open your ears and let him feed you today. Amen. And I just want to keep going and uh, read about the accounts of the children of Israel. We know the story, but I just want to focus on a few verses here. Exodus chapter 16. And I'll read from verse 1 to verse 4, and then verse 35. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to serve this entire assembly to death. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And then we go to verse 35. The Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. After 430 years of slavery, the Israelites were finally free. But down two months down the road, they started to grumble and they wanted to go back to that land of slavery because they had better food there. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you're a foreigner like me here in Sweden and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I would rather be back home. It was so much better there. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you've moved to a new job and you're just feeling like, oh, I wish I just stayed in my old job. There is always that preferring, that other thing that when you feel that something is not going as you want it to go and not sometimes trusting God because there is a place of transition and you're thinking, oh, this doesn't feel comfortable. I just want to go to a place of comfort. But today God is saying that he knows what he has in store for you. And he wants to feed you on a daily basis. Here you see the way God was feeding the Israelites. He told them to get out every day and get enough food for the day. So God is pouring out food, daily food for you that you need to get up and grasp the food that God has for you and eat it each and every day, enough for the day, not too much, just enough for the day. And that's how God is. He's so instructive. He knows all things. He is a great God like we just sung right now. He is great and he knows it all. Do not doubt it. God knows it all. You might find yourself in that little corner where you're thinking, oh my, I don't even want to share this with anybody. Oh my, nobody needs to know this. Oh my, God, God doesn't need to see where I am right now. But God sees and God loves you and God loves you right where you are. Don't doubt God's love. And he's willing and able to provide for you enough for the day enough for the day each and every day for 40 years he provided for the children of israel for 40 years they ate every day fresh food every day they had to be trusting in god every day not to take too much and when they took too much it went bad god has a plan for your life god has a plan for your life believe it right now so get up every day and take the daily bread that God has for you. That's why we have it there in, in the um, Lord's Prayer. Give us each day our daily bread. God is giving you each day your daily bread. Amen. And um, I just want to talk about the journey. We're all on a journey together. And this journey is the journey of life that has a beginning and an end. And it started way back then in the days of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And it's going to come to an end when Jesus returns. And for you and me as brothers and sisters, as children of God, we want to be caught standing firm, standing rooted in, in God. We want God to find us ready for him. And in this life that I'm talking about, in this life that we're living in, God has also made so many provisions for us. And one of the things he has done is he's given us landmarks so that we know what times that we're living in, so that we know where we are in this journey of life. And you can find that a lot, that God sets up appointed times before something happens. Even before Jesus came to die on the cross, there was an appointed time for him to come. And there's an appointed time for him to return. And um, with that, you can see so many things that are happening right now in the world. It's not by chance. It's something that's already been put there in the word of God in scripture. If you read in Matthew 24, if you read in Luke 21, if you read in 1 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 3, you can see all these things 
that have already been uh, prophesied about. It says, many will come in my name and they will claim that I am the Messiah. It says that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise up against nations. Kingdoms will rise up against kingdoms. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. And it also says many will abandon the faith and they will allow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons to happen. And people will abstain from certain foods. Like there is so much that the word of God already shows us is about to happen. And the plan of God is that he would prepare us, you know, prepare us for the end, prepare us to know where we are in time and space. And there's a cry of peace right now we're also in a place of a pandemic and many of us have been shaken and have been so fearful just like elijah so fearful because of things that we're seeing happening because of the reports that we're hearing but God today is telling us that he wants us to see the times that we're in and to feed from him. Remember that we are only sojourners here in this world. This is not our home. Jesus already went to prepare a place for us in heaven. So heaven is our home. So we need to see where we are in this journey, this journey here on earth, which is just a small part of the full life that we have e eventually with our Father in heaven. So he has prepared for us a place and we need to realize the pit stops that we need to take so that we could rest and eat. We need to eat from God. There's the journey and there is food for the journey that God has prepared for us. And I just want us to, to focus on four things that I've uh, chosen to look at, uh, four different types of foods that are pertaining to four different parts of yourself that you need to feed. All right, so let's walk together on this. And the first one that I want us to, to focus on is to feed your faith. Feed your faith. And there is specific food for feeding your faith. And that is the word of God. Faith will come from, he from hearing only the word of God. Not feeding your fear. You know, when things start to happen, like now this pandemic happened, and you start to hear every other voice, instead of hearing the voice of God, God wants you to open his word, and he wants you to feed from him so that your faith is strengthened, and your faith is what will sustain you for the journey, this journey of life. So today, God is talking to us right now and saying, do not let these words of him depart from your mouth. Meditate on his word day and night so that you are able to stand until the end, which is what we want to do, to stand until the end. Amen. So get up and eat food every day. Get up and read your word every day. Get up and seek God's voice every day that your faith would be strengthened in Jesus' name. Amen. You gotta do it. He's provided it for us, but you gotta do it. Get up and open the word of God. Get up and listen to his voice. Amen. Another thing that you need to feed is to feed your spirit feed your spirit and you feed your spirit by praying in the spirit the word of god talks about praying in tongues and it says that's the one thing that edifies your spirit get up and begin to pray pray on all occasions pray for all things pray in the spirit and let your spirit begin to get life let your spirit begin to come alive your spirit will sustain you until the end if you feed it by allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you. you. The spirit of God in your spirit brings your spirit to life. And that's what we need to do, brothers and sisters.
we can't sit down and just watch things happen. We need to start to renew our lifestyle of prayer, praying in the spirit. You can pray in understanding, but pray in the spirit. That's where the power is because you pray the perfect will of God, but you also pray in a way that edifies your spirit, that your spirit gets health, gets nourishment. I encourage you and me today, God is encouraging us today, feed your spirit. Do not be weary. Do not get tired. Just feed your spirit by praying in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Amen. Another feeding that we need to do is to feed our commitment. In feeding our commitment, I just connect with what Jesus did through fasting. You know, before Jesus went to his three-year ministry, he had some time of fasting. He took time out to fast. A time of humbling yourself to God and allowing God to work on you, allowing God to prepare you and direct you for your journey. Because we have this journey of life, but there is an assignment that's specific to you. And we need to really feed this commitment by sitting in the presence of God, fasting and hearing instructions from God and allowing God to break us and to mold us for the assignment, for the journey that he has for us. Amen. If Jesus did it, you need to do it. I need to do it. For his ministry, his three-year ministry here on earth, he had to prepare himself through a fast. Take time to fast. Some journeys that we have, you and me, are so rigorous that it will take just a time of fasting to prepare us for what is in store, what is ahead of us. And finally, I want us to think of the last thing which is feeding your memory feeding your memory so before Jesus went on the cross he ate the Passover meal with his disciples and he initiated the new covenant in his blood and asked us to always do this eat this in remembrance of him feed your memory remembering the price that Jesus paid on that cross. The memory that we have victory. That's what we need to feed on. When you take this sacrament, this holy sacrament of communion, if we understood the power that there is in the sacrament, if we took it with faith, we would really be able to receive the spiritual power that comes with it. There is a victory in this memory of what Jesus did. It's reminding us that we're not fighting from a place of defeat, but we're fighting from a place of victory. That's what the communion is about. And I just want us to really grasp that. If we read Colossians chapter 2 and from verse 13 to 15, When you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So this is what Jesus did, that he gave us the victory. And so we need to feed our memory. And he says, do this as often as you can in remembrance of me, remembering what he had to do to purchase our freedom today and if you do this if you feed your memory of victory it will sustain your journey because you'll always remember even in this situation 
I have victory. Amen. Irrespective of where you find yourself, as you keep on remembering where Jesus was, what he did, and what he's brought in your life, the victory, the triumphing over all the principalities, over every power that is trying to put you down, then you can be sustained for such a long time. And Jesus would find you and me standing in the end because that is what we want, to stand until the end. But also, you know what? As we feed from God, we also become rivers of living water. We start to feed others. People are looking for food. They're looking for something to sustain them. And if we have been sustained by the food that God gives us, we are the people who can feed others and nourish others, their spirits, their faith, bring people into this life of everlasting life with Jesus. Amen. So I just invite us today to really think about where you are right now. Think about, are you tired? Think about how far do you know your life is? How long do you think God has planned for you? Do you have 24 more years? Is this the end? Where are we in the scheme of things? And think, how are you preparing yourself to go all the way until the end? God has made provision for you and me. Let's not slack. Let's be encouraged by seeing these stories of Elijah, of the children of Israel, and knowing that God, God wants to hear from you and God wants to sustain you until the end. Do not give up. Today is not the day to give up. Be nourished by the word of God. Be nourished by praying in the spirit. Be nourished by having a time of communion. Be nourished by fasting. Today is a new day in your life in Jesus' name. You shall not give up you shall live to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen.